Genetics has been very successful in identifying lots of regions of the genome that are associated with altered disease risk. When we want to try to take a genetic hit from a genome-wide association study, or a GWAS, and translate that into some sort of clinical impact, such as developing new therapeutics, we really need to get a good understanding of what the disease mechanism is. We need to figure out how it is genetic variants that are associated with disease are actually causing altered disease risk. The first step really is to identify uh, which variant are, are important. So GWAS hit will, will give you a locus. It'll give you uh, usually a set of very tightly linked variants and you want to identify which one of those variants is the one that is actually causal for the signal. You then have to test that you really are looking at the correct gene. You want to know that you're looking at the right tissues and the right cell types. We have to figure out what the direction of effect is because eventually we, we would want to screen for therapeutics. We need to know does the therapeutic have to increase or decrease the function of the gene. In our case, we started with a hit that came from a type 2 diabetes genetic study. And from that hit, we really hope to identify the disease mechanisms that were at play. This project started many years ago with the support of the Carlos Slim Foundation to identify genetic contributors to diabetes risk in Mexico. Diabetes is a worldwide problem. However, one of the populations that has the highest prevalence of diabetes is Mexico. We know there are genetic factors to it, we don't fully understand those genetic factors. From this GWAS, we found this association at the SLC16A11 locus. For some of these GWAS hits, if you're a little bit lucky, you know what the gene is doing. If you're very, very lucky, you know a great deal about it. Specifically for SLC16A11, we knew nothing about it. So in order to really understand what the disease mechanism is at this locus, we took an approach that combined more detailed genetic characterization with a variety of molecular and cellular approaches in order to establish that the variants at this locus were really leading to reduced SLC16A11 function. And it turns out that there are two separate mechanisms for SLC1611 in terms of type 2 diabetes. One is lower expression uh, of the gene. So screening for therapeutics on that would be looking at the level of, of expression of the gene. And the other is a somewhat of a more complex mechanism where there are actual coding mutations so that the protein is different and its interaction with a chaperone protein is disrupted. The gene we're studying is a transporter, so you can imagine uh, it affecting metabolism of the cell. So in our case, we had these two mechanisms, and in order to uh, link them to disease, we took disease-relevant cells and chemically were able to reduce activity of SLC16A11. What we found is that reduced activity of SLC16A11 uh, resulted in changes in lipid and fatty acid metabolism that was reminiscent of what's actually seen in individuals that have type 2 diabetes. The general idea is that we can use the genetic data that we get from these GWAS to translate into the clinic and eventually look for therapeutics. So we started off with human genetics and we were able to take it one step further to disease relevant variants and likely causal variants as well as the causal gene at the locus. And that really brings up a candidate that you can take to the next step. The mechanisms that we discovered are just the first step of many, many steps to get a therapy, but at least they give you a place where you can grab hold and try to build upon that.